Hello everyone, Brian from Sui Generis Brewing here. And I've done a little bit of an experiment with some mead. So let's see if it worked out and I'll talk about what I did. Uh, hi, so Brian here. I'm usually the guy behind the camera, but today I'm in front. Uh, and I'm here to look at an experiment that I did with some mead. Now, I know these meads up front look quite different, but they're actually nearly exactly the same. They were produced with honey from this hive, last year's batch, uh, from the yellow hive here. They both have the same amount of honey uh, per gallon. They're both one gallon batches, brewed with the same yeast, brewed with the same yeast nutrient at the same uh, nutrient additions and fermented at the exact same temperatures for the exact same um, amount of time. Uh, essentially four weeks at 18 and a half degrees Celsius. Uh, they were then cold crashed and uh, transferred, aged on charred oak for another week, and then transferred, stabilized with sorbate and metabisulfite and bottled. Uh, so the one on the right here, uh, if you read my blog, you might have read about this is the Bourbon Boche. It was an attempt to make a Boche similar to bourbon. For those of you who don't know what a Boche is, that's basically a mead where you caramelize the honey and then you use that as your uh, honey base. The one on the right here is the experiment. This one's a little bit different. Uh, this one, I treated as though it were the candy sugars. So some of you who've watched my channel previously may have seen my video on making Belgian candy sugar. This is a sugar which you take through what's called a Maillard reaction, where you basically heat the sugar in the presence of a base and some protein in order to develop some very uh, nice flavors that are usually quite good in beer. Uh, so here on the, my left, your right, is the mead that I made uh, by basically treating honey in the same way you would make a Belgian candy sugar. So I heated it up uh, to about 125 to 135 Celsius. I added one molar lye uh, to it, which is a strong base that causes those Maillard reactions, to, Maillard reactions to start, sorry. Uh, and in theory, there's pollen, there's also some proteins the bees put in the honey, so the Maillard reactions should basically react with the sugars in the honey and the uh, proteins in the pollen and in uh, the stuff that the bees leave in there. Whereas this is a classical boche. So it's just sugar, caramelized, no extra additions to it. Uh, but similar temperature, similar time. I actually aim for very similar colored sugars on these two, although obviously there are some differences here. Uh, and you might wonder, well, what is the actual difference between those two processes? So if you look at uh, a boche like this, what you're actually generating is essentially partly burned sugar. So you end up uh, with smaller molecules than the sugar that you start with, where you end, uh, get things like diacetyl, which gives it a bit of a buttery flavor, uh, furanol, which is nutty, sorry, furol, which is nutty, and maltol, which uh, has sort of a, a caramelly flavor to it. You also get some larger chemicals from sugars kind of linking together that provide some of the color. Maillard reactions are crazy. I'll put a picture up on the screen kind of showing what's going on with those. Um, but essentially you get the sugars reacting with proteins forming hundreds and upon hundreds of chemicals. Uh, and these are what are going on when you toast bread. They're what's going on when you char a steak. So they create a lot of really nice flavors that are usually quite a bit different than what you would get in a, in a caramelized product. Uh, so this Boche I've been, I've been drinking for six months. Um, I was hoping to get something like bourbon. It was aged on charred oak, but uh, I didn't quite get that character out of it. But it does have the classic Boche characteristics of sort of a caramelly note, a toasted marshmallow note. Um, really quite nice. The one on the left here, actually I haven't opened any of these yet, so this is a, a surprise to you and me. So let's get into it. So we'll start with the classic boche because, well, I know what to expect. Now this is the last bottle and you can maybe see there's some gunk in it. I kept putting this one aside because it wasn't uh, exactly a nice bottle of mead, but you can see there it's got a 
sort of orangey brown hue to it. Of course, you can't smell that, um, but it really just smells like toasted marshmallows, maybe a little bit like caramel or toffee. And the flavor is not too bad either. It's, um, it's a little sweet, uh, which I find is quite common with Beauchets. Um, this one only got down to 10, 12. This one went down only to 10, 19. So there's a fair amount of residual sugar in them. Uh, so it's sweet. Really the, the dominant flavor is sort of a, a toasted marshmallow note. Um, I do really enjoy this. I drink it quite a bit, which is why I'm down to the last bottle here. So it has a very slight uh, burnt astringent note to it, which has been fading over time. I wish I had kept more of these for longer because it's getting better and better as time goes on. Um, but it is, I mean, it's a classic Boucher. It's delicious, it's wonderful. Um, it's, if you've ever had a Boucher before, you know exactly what this is like. Uh, wonderful sort of dessert type beverage. Of course, the real question is what's going on here uh, with the Malliard Boucher. Sorry, there's a bee. <laughs> All right, angry bee's gone. Let's get back in it. So of course the real question is what happens with the uh, Malliard uh, mead? I don't think you get to call this a Boucher. They're not really quite the same thing. So right off the bat, the aroma is completely different. Whereas the classic Malliard is a, or sorry, where the, the classic Boucher is sort of toasted marshmallows. This one is sort of fruity and nutty. I, I get almost like a stone fruit, you know, uh, a dried plum or a dried fig kind of aroma to it. Has a slight aroma of, um, it's hard to explain. Kind of reminds me almost of marzipan, you know, that, that almondy aroma. And it does have a little bit of a, a caramel note to it, which is probably not too big of a surprise. Some of the sugar would caramelize, even though we uh, added that strong base. But let's see what it tastes like. Wow, like night and day difference. Now, obviously, you can tell by the color, there's bound to be flavor differences. Just obviously this one got a little bit darker but it's nothing alike. So even though the gravity is higher on this one, it tastes less sweet. It almost reminds me um, of, of a port. Now it's not as intense as a port, but it's that similar, um, you know, dark fruit, really rich and vibrant flavor to it. Um, Oh, that's really nice. It does have that mild astringency like you get here, which I think was from over caramelizing the sugar. Hopefully with time that will fade. I should add that this thing is about eight months younger than this one. Sorry, we've got an excited bee over here. Uh, so this one is a little bit, quite a bit younger than this one. Uh, but ironically, it actually tastes almost at a similar maturity level. There are some of those younger flavors in it though, so we'll ignore those for now. And there, there's maybe a bit of a toffee note, but nothing like this one here. The other thing too is, uh, and it's probably because there's more residual sugar, even though this one doesn't taste as sweet, it has more body to it and it, it definitely feels richer. Um, I, I have to say that of these two, this is hands down uh, my favorite. And that's on a, a Boucher where I, I really like it. It's probably one of the best Bochets here that I've ever made. This is a completely different Bochet. Uh, the flavor profile can't even be compared. Uh, obviously a, a very different product, um, but absolutely wonderful. Mm. Well, I don't know what else to tell you about it. If you're into making mead, if you're into making Bochets, take a, a few pounds of honey and a gallon of water and try making one of these. I'll put detailed instructions in the blog post and, and in the uh, YouTube video description. It is very different, uh, but very different in a way that is very good. So uh, as much as I'd like to stand out here uh, drinking with you, uh, the bees are starting to get a little bit oinery. I think they're, uh, they're smelling the honey in the bottles. 
So I'm going to wrap it up here uh, and head back on inside. Uh, so once again, it's been Brian from Sui Generis Brewing. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.